All right, hi, year 12s. This is Mr. Lim again. This is our first video on empirical formula calculations. Okay, and maybe you've noticed that this covers page looks a little bit different because we've shoved all the empirical formula calculations in the middle. All right, hopefully we'll cover all of these in the next week or so. Oh, look, the memes are back. This is what we are going to do. All right. So the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio. We learned that in year 11. That makes sense. For an organic molecule, the empirical formula calculations with molecular formula calculations, which means that you can identify the molecular formula, all right, allows for the identification of the ratio of components, which then means that you can work out what the substance is, and then, you know, you can work, draw possible structures like that, okay? It's very common to work out the empirical formula of something and then be asked to work out, uh, be given some properties of it and then work out what it is, all right? And then we'll go through that at the end, maybe in the last video. All right, so in year 11, you did percentage to mass, mass to moles, divide by the smallest empirical formula. Then you get the molecular formula mass, and then you get the molecular formula. In year 12, we're doing uh, slightly something different. In case you're going to get uh, reaction data to go get your empirical formula. The goal will still be to get the number of moles. Okay, so you want to get the number of moles, and then you can work out... Um, the ratio of those uh, elements to everything else right so uh, the number of moles in each of the elements can be found by different types of reactions i.e combustion data titration data or precipitation data i've seen all three in various exams um, today we're only going to go through combustion data but you'll get to go see some titration and maybe some precipitation data in the next couple of videos all right so the steps that you should follow are um, let's have a look. You first of all list out all the elements present, okay? Then you list out all the reaction data, and from that, uh, so some of the calculations may require you to find out the amount of an element, um, the amount of an element as the remaining amount of mass, because uh, after all the other substances have been solved. Okay, so say you have the total amount here, okay? We know it's made out of three components, the green component here, the blue component, and that means whatever is left over from the total is the uh, other substance. Okay, so sometimes that's what it means. You'll have to subtract the uh, amount to get the mass of the last element. Okay, so you're going to go through the reaction data and find out how much of each element was present as moles from a single source. Okay, in year 12, we're going to maybe be using multiple samples from different reactions. And if that happens, you have to get it from a single source. So what you have to do is you have to convert that into percentages, all right? Um, and then once you have the percentages, you can uh, convert it into a single sample of 100 grams, and then you can solve for the um, for the empirical formula. From the far, you get the moles of each element, uh, and then you can work the formula, and that's that. Okay. So some common themes in year 12 of empirical formula calculations. So generally, they're going to be giving you combustion data, and they're going to have generally C, H, and O, and sometimes N, depending on what type of um, substance you've got. Okay, this means that the amount of oxygen cannot be solved from the reaction data, and it's always the oxygen, because you've got oxygen coming from the air as well as the organic substance. All right, so in other words, it's saying, well, I make some CO2, I make some H2O, but really the oxygen from that CO2 and the H2O is coming from the air as well as the organic substance, which means that you can't really use it to work out how much was only in the organic substance. Okay, so generally we use the carbon dioxide that's formed to use to work out the amount of carbon. So carbon dioxide translates to carbon. Okay, and so you can work out the mass of carbon dioxide, which gets you the moles, which gets you the moles of carbon dioxide, which gets you the moles of carbon. And then You've, you need to, you take the moles of carbon and you work out the mass of carbon in the sample and then you can use that to get the oxygen at the end. Okay, because we need to get the mass of that carbon to work out, remember that here's the total mass, here's the mass of my carbon, okay, maybe I'll need to work out the mass of my hydrogen and then I can work out the mass of my oxygen as remainder. Okay, so um, again, some common themes, water, gets you water, gets you the amount of hydrogen, okay? So mole, mass of water, moles of water, moles of water gets moles of hydrogen, okay? And remember, because water is H2O, the number of moles of H will be double, well, yep, will be equal to the number of moles of H2O times two. It'll be double the amount. So if I got one mole of water, I've got two moles of uh, 
hydrogen atoms. Okay, and that should hopefully make sense. Otherwise, you shouldn't be doing chemistry. Um, and then uh, the mass of the sample, carbon and hydrogen can be used to determine the mass of the oxygen in the sample, again, from that uh, mass subtraction. Okay, so here's an example. Let's go walk through this one. Okay, so first step, list out all of the substances there. You got hydrogen, you got carbon, you got oxygen. Okay, and I like to write it out, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Okay, then it says here you've got... 5.82 grams of the sample was found to produce 14.21 grams of carbon dioxide and 5.82 grams of water. And how convenient that that's exactly the same mass of water. All right. So uh, let's do this in black and then we'll highlight in different colors. Okay. So first of all, we start off with the mass of CO2, which was given to us and it was 14.21 grams. Okay. That's nice and easy. Okay. And then we can work out, we can also write out the mass of H2O, which was equal to 5.82 grams. Okay, that's where we start. Okay, then we can work out the number of moles of stuff. So first of all, we work out the number of moles of CO2, which will be equal to the mass 14.21 to 1 over 44.01. And you'll get to know that number very well because you'll use it lots. Okay, which gets you 0.323 mole. We're going to call that A because you need to remember how to save values in your calculator. Okay, so hopefully you remember that the number of moles of C or the number of moles of carbon will be equal to the number of moles of carbon dioxide because there's one carbon in that carbon dioxide. So we can say the number of moles of C is just A. And then I can work out the mass of carbon because I'm going to need the mass of it so that I can get the mass of the oxygen at the end as a mass subtraction. So the mass of the carbon will be equal to A times 12.01, okay, which will be equal to, uh, what's that going to be, 3.88 grams. And I'm going to save that as B, okay. So that's, uh, I, I use these little circles around stuff. Okay, because I want to show that when I eventually get up to saving values of like A, B, C's and stuff like that, I don't want the C to be confused with the carbon. So I use the circles to represent the letters that I'm saving. Okay, so let's move on. I can work out the number of moles of hydrogen or sort of water here as 5.82 over 18.016, which will equal 0.323 mole. I can then work out the number of moles of H, which will be equal to the number of moles of H2O times 2, double it, okay, and I save that as C, okay, um, I'm going to then times that by 2, which will make that 0.646 mole, okay, which I'm going to save that as D, and then I'm going to work out the mass of my hydrogen, which will be equal to D times uh 1.008 which is the molar mass of hydrogen which happens to be 0 0.651 grams okay so now i've got the mass of hydrogen now we can work out the mass of oxygen via mass subtraction so remember i've got the total mass okay i get the mass of carbon i get the mass of hydrogen and then the mass of the oxygen is the remainder there okay so i've got to work out the mass of my oxygen is equal to the mass of the total, subtract the mass of the carbon and the hydrogen. Okay, uh, so that will be equal to the 5.82, subtract, bracket. Now you see you need to really use these brackets and you've got to remember that you've saved values as things, right? So B plus E. Okay, and so this is perfectly fine working if you've already identified what those values are, which will be equal to 1.29 grams. Whoops, that looks terrible. 1.29 grams. And then I can work out the number of moles of oxygen as well. And that was saved under, oh no, that wasn't saved. 1.29 over 16, which will equal uh, 0.081 mole. And I'm going to save that as F. Okay, so now that I've done that, uh, that calculation, I've worked out the moles of carbon, uh, and then worked out the mass of carbon, 
worked out the moles of hydrogen and the mass of hydrogen, then I will use that mass to solve for the mass of oxygen to get the number of moles. Remember, the goal is to get the number of moles of everything. So now I have the number of moles of everything. So I'm going to do the mole ratio of the different substances. I'm going to try and squeeze it over here. Okay, so N here is going to be A. Okay, this one here is going to be D. And this one here is going to be F. Okay, I'm going to divide by the smallest. Okay, and F happens to be the smallest value. Okay, so if F is the smallest value, F divided by F is 1. All right, uh, uh, D divided by F for hydrogen will be 8. Okay, and A divided by F will be 4. Okay, and that leads to an empirical formula of C4H8O. Okay, so remember, you will need to work out the mass for working out the mass of the O uh, oxygen there, but you're not going to use that in the calculation over here. You're going to use the moles data not the mass data, the moles data. This is a really already a long video, but we need to move on. All right, let's do another one. Okay, so here we have something different. We've got hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen, not oxygen. Okay, so let's start this out. Carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Okay, so 1.12 grams of it forms uh, 2.19 grams of carbon dioxide, so I've got a mass of CO2, right, which is equal to 2.19 grams, and I've got a mass of nitrogen dioxide, which is NO2, which is 1.14 grams. Do I have the mass of hydrogen or water? No, I do not, so I'll have to work it out via mass substitution. So let's uh, solve this one. Okay, so... Um, I can work out the number of moles of carbon dioxide as 2.19 over 44.01, which will equal some value, uh, 0 0.0498, which I'll save as A, that's moles. Right, I remember that the number of moles of C will be equal to the number of moles of CO2, which means that it'll just be A, and... Uh, I can know that the mass of that carbon, because I need it for the mass substitution to work out the mass of hydrogen, will be equal to A times 12.01, right? So, which will equal a value 0.598 grams, which I'm going to save as B. Okay, so, uh, then I've got the nitrogen. Nitrogen. So I can work out the number of moles of nitrogen dioxide, which will be equal to 1.14 grams over 46.01. Okay, which is the molar mass of the nitrogen dioxide, which will be equal to 0 0.0248 right mole, which will be equal to C. Okay, number of moles of N will be equal to C. Now, mass of N will be equal to C times 14.01, which will be equal to 0.347 grams, which I'm going to save as D. Okay, so then I can work out the mass of what of hydrogen, which will be equal to the mass of the total, subtract the mass of the carbon plus the nitrogen which will be equal to 1.12, subtract uh, B plus D, okay, which happens to be 0.175 grams, okay, so 0.175 grams, uh, I can work out the number of moles of those hydrogen atoms then, which will be equal to that value over 1.008, which will be equal to 0.174, which will be equal to E. Oops, that looks terrible. Uh, e. All right, it's moles. Okay. Okay, so now I remember I'm looking for the number of moles, number of moles, number of moles, not the masses. So I'll squeeze this one over here. C H 
n. I'm looking for the number of moles. I've got A for C. I've got E for H. And I've got N or C for N. Okay. Which one is the smallest? It looks like this one is the smallest. Okay. So I divide them all by the smallest. Okay. That's going to be 1. E divided by C turns out to be 7. And A divided by C is equal to 2. So therefore it's C2H7N. Okay, so that's the empirical formula. Remember, we're looking for the number of moles, number of moles, not the masses to compare. And we, but we do need to solve for the masses of things to do this calculation to get the mass of the unknown. Okay, have a look at these two questions here. You have a go at them. Um, the answers are, let me just tell you the answers just so that you know what they are. This one here is C3. H6O2. That means that you'll have to, hopefully you'll get a 1.5 here, right? Um, which means that you'll have to multiply that by two uh, to make that the simplest whole number ratio. And this one here is C4H8O, right? Just to um, uh, give you the answers so that if you do it wrong, you can ask about it later. All right, that's it. Off you go. See you later.